Scully today and Joe Garagiola. They're talking. We're going to be the primary game of the week next Saturday in Atlanta. That's a 10 day 11 game road trip coming up. They got a double header with the Cardinals. And then on Tuesday it would be Jose De Leon and Jeff Russell. Three no. Four no. Going to be nice if we was uh, doing those games and on the road. First walk by Ken Daly. And now Biff wants to talk to him. As Brian Harper stands in, Brian flat out to, to right field and hit a double inside the third base bag last time up. We ever get it squared away, Bob? Is it flied out or flew out? I don't care. What, you want to ask some teacher that isn't on strike, they were some grammarian to write us, let us know. So with Pena on first base of the leadoff walk here in the bottom of the seventh, Brian Harper up. Again, the Pirates lead it 2 to nothing on Bill Madlock's 12th home run, and that came in the third inning. Lee Lacey had doubled, scored ahead of him. Hit well, left field. Butler sliding back and over, and he'll take it. Tony Pena retreating to first base. Trying to hit it right on the button, but right at Butler. 10-41 at 9.02. Yep. A strikeout and a fly ball that was handled well in right field. Dale's hit 280 against left-handed pitcher. A couple of more points here because it'd give that little breathing room to old Fort Pitt. Mm -hmm. Foul out of play. Braves have four hits. We have five. Home run by Pedro Guerrera in the seventh. Oh my. Two on his 25th. Two on. Of the year, and it's 6 1 LA. That handles that. They put that up on the board, and the fans here will erupt into joys of ecstasy. However, it's still too early to be watching the scoreboard too much, although we will keep you up to date on the crucial games that are being played. And you'll know when the people here find out about it. Yeah. Line to center field, Murphy. Dale makes the play, and again, Tony retreats. Here comes the Grand Lizard. Yep. <laughs> Lee Tunnel has just barely missed a couple of his pitches that we thought he was going to go long. Oh, I ball thought with. the one in the third inning was going to knock the wall down. Yeah. But um, what they did, uh, it was up against the wall. They just got out here quickly and moved the wall back. No. Oh. <laughs> 0 for 2. Uh, midst of a brief hitting slump is Lee. Duffy's going nuts. They're firing a tape at him. All the scores are running at him now, hog wild. Two down, Tony Pena remains. On first base, he let off the bottom of the seventh with a walk. Mm. Mm. Just missed that ball. I will say this, he took a good swing. There we go. Yeah. Oh, old Duff John is really working now. He, he's racking him up as fast as he can. The ticker, the yeah. ticker is steaming. Ball on a strike. I'll tell you when you get overworked with those things, when they start putting the football scores and the NFL in. Well, how about Saturday? Saturday college, college football. scores, and then you get six double headers. There we go. There's the, There's the tape. Some of the effects. <laughs> and I'll guarantee you, you get some kind of busy. One ball, one strike, two out, one on. Bottom of the seventh, we lead two zip. Uh oh, there's another one that's hit. Awfully well hit, but Dale Murphy's probably going to make a play on it. Dale takes it easily, and that'll do it for the Pirates. In the bottom of the seventh, no runs, no hits, no errors. Tony Pena is stranded at first base, and now we have completed seven innings of play, and the Pirates still lead it two zip.
Okay, we're going to finish up with the Pirate Facemans. Eight assists by a first baseman. And for our benefit, I'm glad he didn't bunt in the 1971 series. He was called the Maryland Strong Boy. He also hit a ball up in the sixth level. That might have been the swing there. He hit it off of Dr. Steve Arlen of the San Diego Padres. Los Angeles six. Philadelphia one. There's the score. Wasn't that crowd, huh? Now there's Marvell Wynn. He's playing in center field. Lee Lacey has moved over to left, so Marvell Wynn replaces Brian Harper in the batting order. Let's see who we got hitting here. Well, we Perry. Got... This is the guy I was yeah. talking about. Gerald Perry. And a six inning, six to one Dodgers. This is uh, Dan Dreesen's cousin. Gerald Perry? Yes. Mm -hmm. Digging a hole down there, too. Daly pitched a pretty good ball game. Yes, he did. Yeah. Seven innings. Two runs, five hits. Rick Camp is loosening for the Braves. Fouled away. Cecilio Guante and Rod Scurry. Just in case. Talk about mm -hmm. looking at young fellows when they come to the plate. The thing that I just like to watch is they got slow feet and see what kind of bat speed that they're generating. Ball. One and two the count for the pinch batter. Perry. There's a slight choke on the bat. Looks very comfortable at the plate. See where he generates his power right there. And he gets a flubbing type of base hit through the middle. And that is number five. Brings up Butler 0 for 3. Here's the swing you were talking about, Will. Yes, he stays back on that back foot. Well, that's good leverage there. Everything is straight up and down. Good center of gravity. Didn't like to see him get that base hit, though, but you got to. Hold it like you see it. Butler 0 for 3 now and choking up on that bat very decisively. We are now really loosening in on Ernest, Cecilio Guante, and Rod Scurry and Perry back. 2 nothing Pittsburgh. Every man comes up in this spot right here is the tying run at the plate. After nine in a row, a base hit by Perry. Eight strikeouts for Lee Tunnel. Who has pitched exceptionally well. If he can get out of this inning, get the ninth and two complete games back to back, it'd be almost unheard of by our Bucks. Mm -hmm. It would be nice, but you know, again, we have to, you know, emphasize the temperature down on, on field level. We was down there doing mm -hmm. the uh, baseball bunch clinic, and well, it was extremely hot. I was sweating bullets down there, and so was a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people had to sit on the turf. Yeah. But it was so enjoyable that no one really complained, and it was most enjoyable. One ball and no strikes here to Butler. Uh, Pena moved out, got that pitch right where he wanted it, but not quite down enough for the strike zone. For the most part, Lee Tunnel has been doing what he's had to do. Now Matlock has called him over to say something to him. 
and whatever it was has been passed on to Lee. Well, it's going to be extremely difficult to get a double plate. Yep. But would. you want him to swing the bat. You have a chance of striking him out, maybe fouling out or popping up. You don't want to walk him. Well, he's right you got on the, the end of the gangplank right now. Well, you got the top of the order coming yeah. up. Three and zero. Oh. And uh, these are the guys that uh, has put Atlanta where they are. These are the guys that have been doing it. And that's what they want to do. Get them up there. Three Atlanta balls. And Three and one to count here with nobody out. Perry, the pinch batter, batting for Daly. Knocked the ball, not with any great authority, but nonetheless he got it up through the middle for the base hit. Now three and one. Right two. Daly a very strong seven innings for two runs, five hits, five strikeouts, and one walk. Now we see Bedrosian warming up. Pop. It's playable. It's playable. Doc got it. Yep. That's what you want. You want to put that ball in play because so many things can happen when you make them swing the bat. Now I want a double play out of this guy. Hubbard, however, has struck out three consecutive times. Well, you just want to make sure that you don't do nothing fancy. You want to just basically go the same way because pitch him away and play him away. Mm -hmm. So Glenn Hubbard standing in, he knows he has struck out three times and he's been in a bit of a slump, but the longer you slump, the closer you come at the time you get a base hit. And I always get a little upset about things like that. Yep. Hitting vigorous will grab you many times. Yep. Just you just can't get careless with, with the guy once you kind of hold the hammer over. Ground ball to Doc. There's five, four, Hoover coming up. There she moves. Yes. Five, four, three, Hoover. And Joe Torrey was just talking about this to you and me as early as yesterday, and we'll return with that story because it's unbelievable what he said to Joe Willis Dodge and me last night. It came through again here tonight. Back after this. Please go to the security office. Dennis Jim. Joe Torrey was talking to Willie and me yesterday. He said, you know, I have that Kingman up. He'd strike out a lot. And doggone, when he didn't strike out, he'd hit into a double play when you wish that he did strike out. And we just saw this double play happen here. Poor Hubbard had struck out three times. And this is where he wanted him to strike out again if he wasn't going to get a hit. Yeah, but well, when you're struggling, Robert, at the plate, it seems like every time you, when you do hit a ball, and in Glenn Covert's case here, he hits a, a nice routine double play ball to Bill Madlock, gets it off to Morrison. And then on the JT. And then sometimes you can just have some real challenging moments. Mm -hmm. But it makes you just want to come out and play that much harder the next day. Here's Rick Camp back to live action. Ten wins, nine losses, and a foul by Lee Lacey. A double, a single, and a pop-up. And a run scored in three trips. Going to the bottom of the eighth inning, still six to one Dodgers. You know, the game the Phillies won yesterday over the Dodgers is the first one all year long over LA. L.A. just put the fills right in their back pocket. Bet you they had a few people there again tonight too. I would say it's a sellout. Well, Rick Camp is basically a sink or slider pitcher here, and he's a guy that you know he has to keep the ball down to be effective. Every time he gets the ball up and out over the plate, both right-handers and left-handers just unwind on it. Two and one, and a two-two count. Camp will uh, 
votes going to Lacey, Morrison, and Madlock. Joe Torrey will be our guest after the game. Daly went seven innings for two runs on five hits, striking out five, walking one. He really pitched the whale of a game. And, uh, and Lee Lacey goes to sit down, strike out number six. Let me say to you, ladies and gentlemen, in all fairness, the ball that Madlock hit for the home run was not a pitcher's mistake. It was way down low, and he just golfed it out here. Normally, I don't think he'd hit that one for a home run. Well, I Am think I what he was, about that? Well, Data was just showing everybody yeah. a lot of breaking balls. Yeah. And it was just a matter of time before he somebody caught up with him. Yeah. I but thought he should was about that high off the ground. Yeah. Oh, dog yeah. stayed yeah. with it yeah. very yeah. well. Yes, he sure did. Yeah. He did everything the hitter was supposed to do. The lower it got, the more he kept mm -hmm. uh, putting his hands further back away from him and getting that good cocking sensation so that he can unwind on the ball, which he did. That ball got out of here in a hurry. Oh, yes, it did. Here's Bubbles. Morrison, 0-4-3, fly to right and struck out twice. This is the first time that he's been really manhandled at the home plate. He's been really hitting a ton. Right now he's 0 for 3 and down to one strike. Two to nothing. Pittsburgh, eighth inning. Dodgers know that score, sitting right up there and now hoping that uh, we can continue to master the Atlanta club and they can pick up another game and move to within one half game of the National League West. Well, gonna tell me something. Yeah. In the event that we watch, uh, that's McMurtry there yeah. and young Gerald. Oh, here's some pitcher too. Gerald Perry there yeah. to the to the right, and there's Mr. Harper there on the yeah. left. Yeah. Oh, the seat pillars. Yeah. All right, one and two. Fly ball left field. Butler. Tell you what, Will. What do you want me to tell you? Do you remember what you were going to say? I was just going to huh? kind of talk about these uh, these these clubs right yeah. now. Uh, Philadelphia. I think their next big series is going to be with with Montreal. Right. And you can bet what that's going to be like. Oh, it'll be a. Uh, that's when that's what we got to be making hay. Well, we're going to be finishing out the mm -hmm. the rest of the Western swing. Western Division, Atlanta, Cincinnati, and, and that, Houston. And that's not going to be easy. No, it is not. But we have played well on the road. Yes. One and zero to the dog, and it's his his Garibi right now holding up. And the tree full of owls is up now. <laughs> Linda's favorite hubby and the only hubby foul away. I would hope so. Yeah. Two and one. Lee uh, Kent Jacoby has been very active in a lot of charitable activities. He runs that great golf tournament, you know, for my seniors Gravis. He does a lot of things in and around the community, even if he were, heaven forbid, not to stay here after this option year, he would still live here. But if you don't get involved in those things, that's something they'll talk about Harding Peterson and Canton all when the season is over. Mm -hmm. One, two down, three balls and a strike to the dog. Rick Camp, uh, chopping foul, the third. Dog runs it out just in case. So the count is run full. Pittsburgh two, and we scored those two back in the third when with one out, Lee Lacey hit a ropo. The center field a little ahead of Murphy for the double. There was no way Murphy was going to catch it. In fact, I thought the way he fielded the ball, he might have had a chance of throwing Lacey out at second. But Lacey's speed got him in there. And sure then did. with then with the two out, the dog went down into the dirt and hit a nine iron shot. Nine thousand miles up out of the park for home run number twelve, and that's it. With Three that two worth, pitch. With that worth back. Yep. And boom. The inning is over, so we have to get three more outs. Let's hope we can do it in regulation without any fiddling around. As we go to the bottom half of the, rather the top half of the ninth, Chambliss, Murphy, Washington, two nothing, Pittsburgh.
Yeah, but talking about the Dodgers are leading. You look at this is our series coming up 9, 10, and 11. Garden Tractor Night on the 9th. That's when we'll be here on HSC. And that'll be something. That ought to be a series. Ought to, this ballpark ought to be jammed for those three. Well, and there's now, always some excitement oh, going on. With that club, two clubs. Now, we're into the bottom of the night. Honeycutt working on his second victory in the National League, leading six to one for the Dodgers over the Phils. But Honeycutt had a better, had like six and two or something when they when they acquired him. Well, maybe when that final comes in over the ticker tape. I think he was leading the American League yeah. in ERA, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. And he had and he had some he had a lot of victories too. Yeah. I mean, like 14 and 12 and 6 or something. Well, we'll find out. Anyhow, <laughs> let's see what we can do here with Shambles, Murphy, and Washington. Lee Tunnel attempting to become the second pitcher in a row to go nine. Bouncer down toward Mo Bubbles throws him out. Boy, and you like to see. Especially a leadoff man and a guy with well, this guy coming up. I don't want anybody on base. That's right. You hate to see a guy like Chris Chambliss uh, on base there. Now, if we can win this game, we hold even with the Phils. In fact, we pick up a game on the Phils and have first place in the East all to ourselves. Meanwhile, the Dodgers will then have closed within one half game of Atlanta as Murphy took a home run whack there, didn't he? Yeah, Struck out, fly to right, and line to center. Yeah, and uh, Tunnel still had good movement on his fastball as we saw it constantly yeah. sinking out of the strike zone. Joe so Torrey will be our guest. Might not be too happy if we can keep it this way, but he'll be aboard, so don't go away. And he's a pro. Yep, 0 and 1. One and one. Remember, they took a heck of a lot of ribbies and home runs out of their lineup when they lost Horner. Yeah, there's no question about it. But they haven't panicked either. No. Uh, Remember, they certainly lost. Johnson is is not a, a Horner. And and the one guy that they had hoped would would do a outstanding job as he did last year because he was voted the team player going down the stretch was Jerry Royster. Mm -hmm. he However, got Jerry Royster's on the DL now, so you got Horner and Royster, and you had and that's where. Randy Johnson was given his opportunity to showcase his skills. Two balls and a strike. Foul, and the count is two and two. The way they call, uh, they say it's three and one. I thought he fouled it off. I'm pretty sure. They see now, they uh, Jail Barra saying, "What's the count?" And the yeah. umpire said three and it is two and two. It's not three and two. Okay, two balls, two strikes. Now, that shows me that the Dale Barra's alert. He wanted to know what the count was too. Get him. All right. Get him. Just missed. Lee Tunnel pitching a very intelligent game. As you see that graphic there that all the fans here are looking at. The Phillies are still batting. Tunnel, three and two to Murphy. Wow, Tony Payne wanted that one. That is the second walk. Well, and that was not a bad pitch. I don't know how the Dick and Murphy laid off it. I'll well, tell you something, that pitch looked to me like it had the outside corner of the plate. Payne is talking with him about it. Yeah. I think I, I, I just like to say they have been doing the umpires oh, have tremendous. been doing a great job. I'm not going to argue with him about that one. No, no. Because it could have went either way, I'm sure. Yep. Murphy uh, is at first base now. Washington lined the second, struck out, and got an infield single. He has power and he hits it down to Jason Thompson. He'll step on second to it. Sure one. Now Murphy's out at second. Two down and here is Rafael Ramirez. Popped to first. Fly to left. Grounded to short. And he came in at 296. You know uh, there are very few short second base combinations in the major leagues that have hit over 300. Milwaukee and Robin Young and company, they got one. Detroit has a combination and Trammell and company. But very few ball clubs have a combination where both short and second both hit over 300 for the season. Mm -hmm. And that is a tough thing. And this is a guy here. This guy's a guy you got to watch. Who there. has been doing a magnificent job yeah. in coming through in the key situations. This is the one guy that they said, if anybody, who has been doing the job. So this is a guy you want to shut down right now. A ball. One one. 
Now that is Murphy out at second base. He walked with two down. Pittsburgh leading two nothing. Young Lee Tunnel, I think, is trying for his I know first major league shutout. So a lot of people yeah. too, Gunner, would probably have said second complete. Why didn't game. Jason possibly go and try and get the lead run? Oh, he couldn't have got him. You make sure one in that no. situation. One one. Just outside ball two, two and one. Yeah, and I don't think that he could have gotten Murphy anyhow with Murphy's speed, and no. uh, he was off and running the moment the ball was hit. That's Tanner with that ever-present card, and there's that Harvey Haddix with that clicker in his hand counting the pitches. Two-one delivery, ball three. You know, you talk about Murphy's Man. speed. He has 19 stolen bases, only been thrown out four times. So you know that's an advance. Yeah. So you won't dare take a chance yeah. on it. Rafael Ramirez. Three and one. Pal tip, and that looked like a ball four. So now the count is full. And this crowd that wants Lee Tunnel not only win, but they're rooting for this kid to get his shutout. This is a big pitch. Look at the fans here. They're starting to stand up. They want him to get it. Three balls, two strikes. They can feel it. Bring it on, Lee. Line down the left field line, hooking, and it is a foul ball. That's what makes this game exciting. Yes, sir. It's what happens between those little white lines that brings everybody up to their feet. Now back to second base goes Dale Murphy. Pittsburgh two on a home run by Madlock. Uh, Atlanta Braves nothing. Lee Tunnel trying to be, get his first major league shutout. Three balls, two strikes to Rafael Ramirez. Foul off the right side, no play. There is no other game in the world that brings up the drama and the tension of pitcher batter in a situation like this. It's just that's the charm of this game. There is no clock. Three balls, two strikes. Come on, Lee, baby. Keep throwing strikes, big guy. Ooh, we lost him. Now Tanner has a decision. That is the third walk. Two of them in this inning, and Biff Polkaroba. Here comes Tanner. Biff Polkaroba is going to be up there to bat, and he's a guy that just been killing us down through the years. He is one for three. Tanner talking things over. I don't think Chuck is out there to I, no, I take him out. I don't think so either. I think they just. Talk a little bit about yeah. things. He's staying right with him. Boy, he's something. Yeah. He is something. Well, he's one in a million. Yep. I just want to let that young man out there know I've got confidence in you. Throw strikes, son. Uh, this guy can base hit you, yeah, but try to stay out of his power where he could hit a home run off you. Those things like that he might have been talking about. All right. Outfield swung to the left. Two down, two on, two nothing Pittsburgh, two out. Right, get ahead of them. Those strikes. Let those infielders and outfielders work. Listen to these crowd. That's a final. All right. Dodgers beat the Phil six to one. Now watch this. All the actions here, and we'll just shut up and let you enjoy it. Now we set the scene. They have two on, two out. Biff poker over the batter. All and one. Foul. Like two. Funny feeling, Gunner. Yep. Dave DeManna popping that crew a camera around. You all watch it. Here it is. That's what you want to do. You want to miss outside. You don't want to miss inside. Center field, Marvell win. We got him.
Pirates are in undisputed first place in the National League East. We still got a way to go, but we're on top of the mountain, if only for now. As you see the final, we'll be talking to Joe Toy when we return. Stigel, I got to say, this had a little bit of everything in it, wouldn't you say? Well, I tell you one thing. I was really impressed with Lee Tunnel's first major league shutout tonight, and his second complete game of the season. I thought he handled himself extremely well in some situations that could have developed into something. Chuck again going out, not to take him out when he got two men on in the in the ninth there, but to just tell him what he wanted done. And he followed it to a tee. Madlock providing the game winning RBI with a monstrous <laughs> ball that he hit out there in the Bucks Garden. So I thought it was just a fine game. Again, the Bucks play a complete game with no errors. And everybody just did a splendid job. That's all I could say. Well, I think that says plenty, I'd guarantee. And right now, I'm sure that uh, Steve might have a little trouble getting Joe Troy hooked up. It's not that he, they're not ready yet, but you know, you're asking a man to take a tough loss. He knows what's happened elsewhere and I'll tell you what happened elsewhere. He knows the Dodgers are now within a half game. There was something like a nine or nine and a half game lead the Braves had and then they ran into that situation that back to back series and they lost their best one of their best players in Horner and then the man that, 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 that Will talked about in Royster and just punch out about 100 ribbies between those two guys and 25 30 home runs and you take that out of your lineup. And I don't care what you say, as Will will guarantee you, you're hurting, and all of a sudden now it's a it's a it's a cat race. It's That's back right. to a half game. Any time you lose some of your key individuals that you're depending on so heavily, and and those mm -hmm. circumstances uh, prevail, you you, yep. you you gotta worry about things like that. Well, we'll go up some scores here. All right, he's gonna come out with Harvey Haddix because uh, Joe is probably I, having a meeting. I would think and he uh, and I, I know that he was he's not the kind of guy I bet he would say Steve would you mind if tonight I uh, switch off me I'll go on tomorrow or something but please just not tonight I've been shut out and beaten and uh, I'd prefer if you don't mind and naturally we're going to we'll give in to something like that that's a very reasonable request. There's no question about a gun it was probably a case where he feels that he needs to talk to his players after this particular ball game. There's still a half a game up there's really no reason I think because of Joe Torrey being the manager of the Atlanta Braves in 1982 has to be the big reason that they did so well because it's virtually impossible for a, a major league ball club 
to be a strong contender as the Atlanta Braves were all last year to win it without a left handed pitcher even in the bullpen or in the starting rotation. So when you look around you have to say mm. Joe Torrey mm. uh, Bob Gibson and Dale Maxville had to be tremendously responsible. for it. Oh there's no question about that and incidentally the Dodgers are only 21 games the Braves are only 21 over 500 the Dodgers are 20 over 500 and there's a half game separating them. We'll be back to talk to Harvey Haddix and about that great pitching and tomorrow I think we just got to absolutely have Lee Tunnel on the air with us and we'll get into that. But right now before we join Harvey Haddix let's go back to the studio. Nearest, all right. Kitten. Okay. Kitten. Boy, two, two, two CG. Yeah, Mike. Great. Just give us a shot if we want to. But I don't know. You know, we might. And there at the end, we didn't want Watson to swing it. Kitten. It's great. You find out what it's. Well, somebody down there should know something about pitching. Uh, Steve Blass, it was a pitcher, and the guy that's our pitching coach through the greatest games ever been fired up in the history of the game of baseball, 12 perfect innings, Harvey Haddock. So why don't we go down there and you guys talk about it, uh, what kind of a game we saw and whatever you want to talk about. Okay, thank you, Bob and Harvey. Appreciate you joining us. And uh, understandable situation. Joe Torrey was going to be with us, and I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk to Joe. It's a difficult ball game. They're right in the middle of things too. But uh, Harvey, the story tonight is is uh, Lee Tunnel, and he just did a whale of a job. Our second complete game. You got to feel awfully proud of him. I sure do. Uh, Lee was outstanding tonight. The thing about him, he got his curveball over. He got his change up. He, he threw a lot of off-speed curveballs to get the left-handed hitters out tonight. He he just threw good stuff, and he had good control. Now was I getting the right impression upstairs it looked to me like he was throwing either a little cut fastball or a slider out of way to right hand hitters and he was right on the money with it using about the uh, the outside third of the plate. Yes he throws a cut fastball well it's, uh, we call it a slider but it's more like a cut fastball of, of his pitch but uh, he mixed them up he's got a sinking fastball he's got a riding fastball he throws the cut fastball and he throws two speeds of the curveball. So and the off speed curveball tonight was very effective for him. Well we were talking upstairs Harvey and the fact that that when he seems to be most effective and you 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 made note that he throws five or six different pitches when you break them all down and for him to throw them consistently over the plate just makes him twice the pitcher that that he would be if he were struggling with one particular pitch. Yeah he got a couple of guys tonight I know he was three and two on him uh, and he changed the speed on the curveball on him and got him and uh, that's a sign of a good pitcher. Anytime you can change that speed so when you're three and two on a guy you you can pitch Harvey uh, we noticed several times you have your counter you keep track of the pitches the number of pitches each of our pitchers throws uh, what was the count on Lee tonight well uh, 131 was his total count and uh, last night Mac uh, made 134 pitches and the day before that uh, De Leon made 135 pitches so they're pretty close well that's that's a good range you'd mentioned as we we're walking over uh, that seems to have increased a complete game a victory by a pitcher now you're running up into that. 130 range or late 120s, and uh, you had some thoughts about that. Yes. Uh, it th uh, okay, uh, Will. I think you have a question for Harvey. I have one up here. Go Will? Ahead. Will, if you got one, I have one for Harvey. If you got one, Will, you want yeah, to I just yeah. wanted to ask Kitten one yeah. thing. You know, uh, we we all know what a confidence instiller Chuck Tanner is. When Chuck ran out to the mound, a lot of people thought that he was running out there to take him out. Could you just kind of share with the the folks at home, Harvey? What uh, the kind of things that Chuck was telling young Lee at that time? Yes, he was just going to reassure him, and he was going to leave him there when he left the bench. He said, "I'm not going to take him out. I just want to reassure him not to pay any attention to the base runners. To just work on the hitter alone." 
uh, they had Bob Watson and, and uh, another one sitting over here on the bench you could hit the ball out of the ballpark on you so this is one thing we were concerned about. Now you also find out something about what Lee Tunnel is made of uh, and you know that going in but that is such a great thing uh, in showing that kind of confidence because you're going to lean on a Lee Tunnel going down the stretch and, and that was just a, a great thing for him to go through that have Chuck come out reassure him and then pop that last out. Yes uh, and uh, I've got to say this as far as Lee Tunnel is concerned. Uh, uh, oh, probably six weeks ago he and I were talking about his pitching and he looked like he got a little tired at times. Uh, I su suggested to him I said why don't you run a little more and run a little bit different than you've been running before run uh, sprints at the end and uh, it looks like it's paid off. Mm -hmm. Bob you have a question for Harvey. I have three and one question Harvey you know, I think right. Right, the first one is you know we talked about the counter you have and I'd like you to explain how many you feel comfortable with if you get up to a certain point how many for any pitcher number one number two. Do you ever use that speed gun or ray gun? And number three, will you give us your philosophy about air conditioning with pitchers? All right. All uh, one, two, three. Well, the, the first thing, yeah. uh, we say uh, 100 and, uh, or any time you go over 100 pitches, the best uh, to me is out of a pitcher. On a cooler night, yes, they can go 110, 115, 120 pitches and still have their good stuff. But uh, when they get up in there, they're starting to get a little tired. On a hot day, uh, 100 pitches out of a pitcher is, is pretty good, and uh, he's going to start losing his stuff normally. Uh, no, we do not have a gun that we keep uh, track of the, the speed of the ball. I think the most important part is not just the speed alone, but the, the movement on the ball uh, at home plate. I think that's more important than the velocity. Of course, if you have both of them, that's a great thing. And then uh, as far as your third uh, uh, question is, uh, I forgot what you asked me on that third one. So would you air repeat that again? Air oh, the air conditioning. Oh, it's uh, to me, it's a, a pitcher's biggest enemy is the air conditioning. Uh, uh, this is something we didn't have to contend so much with uh, at the time. Uh, but uh, uh, today, uh, with air conditioning, every place uh, your buses, your planes, your uh, restaurants, uh, every place you go is air conditioning. And I'm a sticker on uh, keeping an arm warm at all times. And uh, I think this has caused a lot of guys, uh, young guys, troubles because they do not cover those arms and keep them warm at all times, especially after they've pitched. Well, Harvey, when you and I were together on the ball club, I remember you'd come It could be broiling hot in St. Louis or Cincinnati where you get 105, 110. You'd come on. You would never sit next to the air conditioning side of the bus. You'd never had an air conditioned room and you always had your left arm covered up even on a hot day between innings. Isn't that correct? That is correct. Uh, I believed in keeping it warm. and. And to this day yet when I come to the ballpark I'll have a long sleeve shirt on or a sweater and anything I never you never know I might still have to throw some batting practice yet. you might have to when you see Marsha tell her I, that I still think I'm your favorite television show. All right. OK Robert. baby. Uh, right. Harvey one thing in, in conjunction with that uh, these humid days these hot days that, that tell so much on a pitcher. Uh, do you remind the guys or you kind of leave it up to them uh, as to how much shorter they'll cut down their preliminary warm up so when they're down in the bullpen and then whether they cut down in between innings when they come out to loosen up again. Well I kind of leave them on their own on that. Uh, I've got one pitcher McWilliams he likes to throw a lot uh, in the bullpen and of course he's been very successful. So when they're successful we leave them alone and uh, it's true I'd, I'd kind of leave the guys on their own if they get throwing a little too hard sometimes I will slow them down a little bit in the bullpen. But I kind of leave, believe in leaving the guys on their own. They know what they have to do. They feel like they know themselves. Willie I think you have a question. Yeah we, we can make this the last question. Kitten. Uh, most of the people at home just like to know how healthy are the troops especially the pitching staff. Well at this point well they look very healthy and of course these couple of days off without using the bullpen helps us there. So I think we're in pretty good shape right now. Well then everybody can take a deep breath. Yes sir. Right. OK. One last question Harvey that, that I've been concerned about going down the stretch. Uh, do you think maybe the key man on the ball club going down the stretch is your short man. Well yes uh, they're important at all times of course in uh, now next month when the weather gets a little cooler uh, you figure your pitchers to get stronger but the way the races are today you've got to go to those short men uh, uh, quite often uh, and of course it's the right versus the right and the left versus the left and Chuck plays that to the hilt and I think you'll see quite a bit of that before this season's over. OK well Harvey thanks so much uh, you know I know you used to be able to swing the bat and appreciate you pinch hitting for us and, and helping us out and uh, sure did enjoy the conversation. Uh, Thank you and, and please accept this gift from Atari and we'll look forward to uh, seeing you here and, and uh, more complete games the more the merrier in that category. All right. Thank you. It's my pleasure. OK. And we'll be back with more after this.
All right, here are the stats. 2-5-0, and oh, Atlanta 0-5-0. Oh, and oh. First Major League shutout for Lee Tunnel. Goes all the way, second complete game. And two in a row by the Buccos. 7-5 is his record. Daly, the loser, pitched a fine game. Let me tell you, 4-4, four, four, he threw a pitch way down low, and Madlock dug it out for a home run number 12 and uh, gets the Garibi and everything else with a man aboard. So the Buccos win it 2 to nothing. Now, in this torrid National League race, let's look around. Cardinals beat the Reds 3 to 1, no home runs. Winning pitcher was uh, Rucker, the loser was Power. And uh, save for Sutter, number 15. And the Dodgers beat the Phils by a score of 6 to 1. Guerrero, number 25, in the seventh inning with two men aboard. Honeycutt is in with a record now of 2 and 0 as a Phil, but I don't know what he is overall because he won a lot of games before they got him. And in the meantime, Hudson loses. 43,000 were looking on. Now, the race in the National League East is simply right to here. Let me show you. We're leading in the National League East by one game over Philadelphia, and we're five over 500. Montreal by uh, hanging in there, what they're doing, and right now they're leading three to one at the end of six and a half innings of play. They are two and a half back if they if they win, they stay right there. And the Cardinals by winning stay two and a half back also, at dead even at 563-63. So that takes care of the of the race there. San Francisco, as you see with New York, it's a uh, four to two ball game. New York. And Chicago four to one uh, over Houston. Now over in the American League, we'll get you up to date on those uh, situations. Toronto is a final seven four over the uh, over Detroit. Uh, Mullenix uh, hit a home run, and Mosby hit a home run for Toronto. Uh, Brookins and uh, Wilson and Trammell uh, for Detroit in a losing cause. Milwaukee and Oakland. It was five to two in favor of Oakland. That'll change that American League East around a little bit. Meanwhile, Chicago two, Boston one. That's the final. Minnesota, Baltimore. It's five to two at the end of seven and a half. Baltimore, big game there. If the Orioles can win it, they can go into first place and stay there a little hefty. And meanwhile, Kansas City is leading one nothing into four with Texas and uh, White hit a home run for Kansas City, New York, California later, Cleveland, Seattle later. Now here's quickly the, the standings in the American League West. The White Sox are 71 57 if it stays that way and they'll be six and a half games in front if Kansas City wins. If not they'll go back to seven and a half. Baltimore by losing uh, their ball game uh, no, by winning their game with Minnesota can stay right up on top. Uh, by a game and a half over Milwaukee who lost. So that's about the way the race is my friends all over the league and tomorrow night we're coming right back here with you tomorrow afternoon I should say. So let me just say right now this winds up pirate baseball. The executive producer of home sports entertainment Bernie Seabrooks. Coverage of tonight's game was produced and directed by David DeMana. Sports consultant for Warner Communications Ali Sherman. With us again tomorrow afternoon when the Buckos meet the Braves at 1.30 right here at Three River Stadium. For Steve Blass and Willie Stargill, this is the old gunner saying we beat them 2 nothing behind Lee Tunnel's magnificent 2 nothing shutout. So long from Three River Stadium on HSE.